Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is your brother Isaac from Elk Free Initiative. And inshallah today we're going to continue with our series of major contributors to the Arabic language. And today inshallah we're going to look at a certain person called Al Khalid or Al Khalid ibn Ahmad Al Farahidi. And he was born in the year 718 in Oman and died in the year 786 or 791. And Al Farahidi is well known and came soon after Abdul Wali, who we mentioned in the last series. So Al Farahidi actually originally was a member of the Khawarij. So he was a Kharijite who were very extreme in their opinions at the time. However, when he and his family later on moved into Basra in Iraq, they converted to what is now well known as Sunni Islam and they left behind their Kharijite opinions. Now, before we move on to Al Farahidi's actual works and his contributions to Arabic, it's very well important to mention his actual piety and his character. Now, at this time, it must be remembered that there was much, much debate between the different sects in Islam, and Al Farahidi himself witnessed this. However, he was very keen not to get involved, and he refused to criticize any other scholars, no matter what their opinion was. And quite simply, he just excelled in his own work. Furthermore, he was very well known for not accepting any gifts or anything like that which would compromise or maybe people could accuse him of bias. So he was very well aware of the different situations of different scholars receiving gifts and he was very, um, he tried to avoid this at all cost to keep all of his knowledge uh, unbiased and fair to all. Furthermore, Al Farahidi, it was said of him that he used to perform the Hajj pilgrimage every year. And on one particular occasion, he made the word to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah granted him a particular knowledge or something which nobody else knew at the time and that by it he would become well known amongst the people. And it appears that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed did answer his prayer as we are about to learn on some of the major contributions which he made to Arabic and Arabic language as a whole. And furthermore, he used to have very many quotes which people still use to this day and one of his most famous ones was that real wealth laid in the mind and not in money. And so it's for this particular reason that he himself considered that he was very very wealthy because of his amount of knowledge. However, on the outward appearance he wore very simple clothes and would physically appear poor. So we're going to move on now inshallah to some of his major contributions to Arabic. So the first one, or the first thing to remember is that he wasn't actually just an ex expert in Arabic. He was an expert in Sharia, in the prophetic sira, mathematics, astronomy, poetry, even the different rhythms based in music. And one of his titles was Abqari al lugha which means roughly someone who is outstanding and excellent in language. And you will see that he gained this title because he was also known as the shining star of the Basran school of thought in Iraq. And so he was quite, quite obviously the envy of fellow scholars in Basra, but also in Kufa, who was the rival group at the time, or the rival school of thought at the time in Iraq. So his first major contribution to Arabic was the Kitab al Ain. Now the Kitab al Ain is the first Arabic language dictionary to ever have been created in the world. And it was called Kitab al Ain for several reasons, particularly because it starts off with the letter Ain instead of the letter Alif. Now Al Farahidi didn't want to start off with the letter Alif because it's a weak letter and it's considered to be something which is difficult and always causes problems in Arabic language. And so he started off and thought, well, he thought that the letter Ain comes from the deepest part of the throat, so the makhraj for the letter Ain is the deepest in the throat. And also the letter Ain or the word Ain in Arabic can be translated as a source or a spring. And so by calling his book Kitab al Ain, it was saying that his book was the source of much knowledge because from it many people around the world or people who were new to the Arabic language and Islam were able to understand the Quran from a dictionary by looking up the meanings of the words which they didn't know. So we can see from this diagram how the Ain comes from the very furthest part of the throat and it's for this reason that perhaps Al Farahidi named his book Kitab Al Ain. Another contribution that Al Farahidi gave to the Arabic language was developing or further evolving the dotting system which Ad Duwali had created, as we mentioned before. Now, if you remember from last time, Ad Duwali had created the dots. So, a dot which, depending on its place according to the letter, would indicate a fatha, kasra, or a dhamma. 
However, there was still much confusion by this system, and so he actually developed these dots into the characters or the harakats that we use today. So the dhamma that looks like the little wow, and the fatha, the line on top of a letter, and the kasra, a line on the bottom of a letter. It was actually Al Farahidi who designed these letter or designed these characters and implemented them into his works, which were then later transcribed into the Quran and in fact haven't been changed since Al Farahidi created them all those years ago. And the second thing that he did as well was to create the Shadda. So the Shadda, the joining of two same letters. Again, this is indicated today by a small little W which is used on top of a letter. And it was Al Farahidi who actually designed and created this letter. And so by his amazing effort in this particular field, he was able to clearly distinguish between the different pronunciation and unify the Quranic recitation, which is the one that we use today. And as we mentioned before, Al-Farahidi was well known amongst his contemporaries and in fact there were many accusations against him. And one of the biggest ones was that he in fact didn't write Kitab al-Ain, the dictionary of the Arabic language. And it is said that it was one of his students named Al-Layf ibn Nasir ibn Sayyan from Khurasan. He was one of his prominent students and it was said that it was him who in fact had written Kitab al-Ain. However, I think after much research into this field, it can be safely concluded that it was in fact Al-Farahidi who designed this Kitab al-Ain. It was his idea and if anything, he started it off by starting with the letter Ain and set the template so that his student, Al-Layf and others could then complete it later on. And in fact, it became such a monumental work spanning across 26 different volumes one for each letter of the Arabic language, except for the weak letters, the Alif, Wow, and the Ya. So you can see that it was a major work, and we have a few manuscripts which are still being used today. And from Kitab al Ain, developed many other dictionaries, and it was because of his effort by trying to systematically organize all of the words and vocabulary in Arabic that the other dictionaries. Uh, were developed later on in the, in the following years. Now to finalise, in fact, apart from Arabic grammar and or the, the basics of Arabic language, he actually was very, very excellent in Arabic poetry. And now Arabs at the time loved their poetry and poets were held in high esteem. And so Al-Farahidi naturally was very, very respected, well respected amongst his people at the time. And it was in fact uh, Al-Farahidi who developed or uh, invented, if you like, or found the principles of Arabic poetry. Now it was said that he was walking by a blacksmith and he heard the rhythmic beating of the blacksmith hitting the anvil and so from this he realised that Arabic poetry was similarly composed into metres and he codified 15 Arabic scales or metres. And this important principle is used by Arabic poets to this day to ensure that the rules of Arabic poetry are maintained and that there is no discrepancy. And so we have preserved through his effort, again, another beautiful example of Arabic being used in such a fantastic way. And furthermore, he then developed it and writ all, writ, wrote all of these rules down in the book called Kitab al-Arud, which again is one of his well-known books amongst his other books, as such as uh, Kitab al-Ain. So, as we can see, it is thanks to him this fantastic person, through his ijtihad, his hard work and great effort, that we have many, many things that we are still using today. So we mentioned that it was he who formed the Kitab al-Ain, so the first Arabic dictionary. Furthermore, Al-Farahidi is the one who evolved the dotting system that Ad-Duwadi had developed a few years earlier. And so we now have the Dhamma, the Fatha and the Qasra with their distinctive shapes and their positions, and also the Shadda. And so by it, when we read in the Qur'an every single day, we are being accurate in our pronunciation. And again, it's thanks to him, amongst other scholars, uh, that we're able to do this and avoid any mistakes in our recitation. So we do indeed ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him for any miscomings or any sin that he may have committed. And that Allah grants him a high and noble place in our Jannah al Firdaus, befitting for this noble character, this pious scholar of Islam in this very, very difficult time for Islam as well. 
So inshallah I pray that you've benefited from this short video and do stay tuned for more upcoming videos from the Oak Tree Initiative. As always you can keep up to date with what's happening at Oak Tree Initiative by logging on to www.theoti.org and you can see any up and coming courses that we may be holding in a town near you. So, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and I look forward to seeing you next time.